Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you can see me. I've got my camera on, but I can't see myself on the screen anymore, as I could see Devon. So hopefully you can see and hear me OK. Um, so thank you. I'm uh, Aidan Sims. Uh, I'm the contract director for uh, responsible for the, the Maximus Restart Scheme delivery. And I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about what that means in, in a moment. Um, uh, just in the, in the next few minutes, um, and like Devon, I'm keen to try and be uh, relatively brisk um, in my presentation, just because uh, I'm, I'm obviously keen to, to see if there's any questions or theory that, that the team have. But so I want to talk to you a little bit about Maximus, in case you don't know who we are, um, and then I'm going to share a little bit about what Restart is and, and who it's designed to support. We've been delivering the scheme now for around six months, so I'd like to talk a little bit about um, those reflections in that first six months and, and uh, what we've experienced. Uh, partnership is a key piece of uh, of our delivery approach, so I, I'm keen to, to share a few thoughts on that, and then talk a little bit about what our um, our experience and observations are around the work we're doing in Redbridge at the moment, um, which obviously we've got colleagues from Redbridge on the on the call, and they can talk far more eloquently about Redbridge than, than I uh, will attempt to. Um, and then hopefully, provided the the technology works, we've got a um, a bit of a case study video that I'd be great to be able to share with you and so you can see a, a, a single example of, of some of the support we've been offering so far and then just a couple of thoughts on on what next restart for the future so um so hopefully i'll be able to cover that uh, relatively eloquently um so just to start with um uh oh, sorry there's uh I'm, I'm aha there we are i can i can see myself now so i'm not sure if you if you, if you can um so a little bit about Maximus. Um, we're one of the leading providers of employment skills and disability programmes in the UK, and we deliver services um, uh, both in the UK and, and internationally. And, and certainly in the UK, we've been delivering services uh, in combination with our, um, our sister organisation, Remploy Now, who, who I actually joined uh, nearly 15 years ago um, for over 70 years since the end of the Second World War. And so we've got a really extensive experience of delivering uh, employment and skills support, particularly to those uh, with potentially the most complex barriers and challenges to help them move back into sustainable and, and meaningful work and and to date um we've we've helped over 250,000 people to to find work and and develop skills and hopefully transform their lives which we're obviously really passionate about we deliver uh, uh, currently a large number of programs of differing scales and, and natures right across the uk and um, I'll talk a lot about Restart in a moment, but in addition, we deliver the Work and Health Programme in Wales and, uh, and in partnership with uh, Redbridge in London. Uh, we're delivering the uh, innovative health focus services in Greater Manchester, as well as a range of other provisions aimed at perhaps addressing more health or technical uh, areas, such as the Access to Work Mental Health Support Service, and a really small localised pr provision commissioned by the West Midlands Combined Authority called Connecting Communities. So really a breadth of services from the, the large scale national services uh, to, to really localise community-based uh, solutions. And, and, and in all of that, it's understanding the, the key barriers and challenges to the, the individuals joining those schemes and, and how best to support them that's, cre that's key. Next slide, please. So what is the Restart Scheme? So Devon um, obviously trailed the fact that it's a, uh, it's a real central uh, part of the government's plan for jobs. Um, it's uh, the, the budget set aside in the uh, original concept for restart was 2.9 billion and it's commissioned by the department for work and pensions so what that means is over the time scale that the restart scheme will run it's actually the largest employment provision that the department uh, has ever procured work program some of you may be familiar with a few years ago um, is the the nearest equivalent but and the value overall is, isn't uh, far apart the actual time of which that um delivery will run means that, that restart is the largest program that's been procured but you might expect it was in direct response to the covid19 pandemic and the economic impacts that that's had and the large numbers of people who have unfortunately found themselves out of work and so the scheme is designed uh, and is being delivered right across the whole of england and wales it's, it's devolved and delivered separately in scotland um, to provide support to those that, that need it most Maximus, working with our delivery partners, will uh, are operating the restart scheme across South and East London and in uh, South and West Yorkshire, Derbyshire and, and Nottinghamshire. And, and we're one of uh, six or seven different prime providers who are delivering that scheme then right across the UK, uh, as I said, in England and in Wales. 
So the eligible uh, participants need to have been uh, on the in-work benefit regime, essentially being out of work for between 12 and 18 months and require additional support to help them back into employment. So ultimately, an individual who have been working with the job centres for that period of time uh, will unfortunately, have, have, for, for, for a number of reasons, not been able to have secured employment and so will then be referred across to us or the other prime providers of the restart scheme to provide a, a more specialised or tailored package of support than the job centres are able to to provide or, or, or in scope to provide. Uh, the scheme itself is, as I mentioned, hugely, the, the expectation is that more than a million people will be uh, referred through to the scheme and supported over the, the three year period of referrals and the four year period of, of the, the, the service overall. And uh, all of those referrals, unlike some previous provisions where there are a variety of different access routes, all of those referrals of participants will come through Job Centre Plus. And so uh, the eligibility will be selected and identified via that route. And so it comes back down to that navigation piece, which I can touch on shortly later. Uh, and then the final point on restart is that the collaboration and alignment of services is a critical success factor. So the department is really key, more so than I think we've seen in, in other provisions, to, to actively encourage collaboration and partnership at a, at a local level. So, um, as, as Devon mentioned, obviously Restart uh, as, a, as a scheme is, is, is still very young. It's only being delivered now for just under six months. And so I thought it would be helpful to probably share a few uh, early reflections uh, as far as I can in terms of the, uh, the experience today. And, and, and again, how we've experienced the sort of developing economic situation in delivery of the scheme so far. So um, the, the first thing to note is that we've seen a huge growth in the uh, employment support sector. So after a period of quite high employment and, and therefore low levels of, of um, outsourced provision, the scale of the impact of the, the pandemic has meant that there has been an incredible growth in the numbers of people supporting individuals uh, to find work. And, and Maximus and our partners alone have recruited over a thousand new people already in this first six months to deliver the scheme. And, and that picture is, is mirrored right across the country as as other providers have done the same, which is a, a huge positive as well. Many of our own employees have themselves been fa found themselves out of work and, uh, as a result of the pandemic. So it's great to be able to provide that support directly and, and, and those individuals bring that personalised experience to supporting others. We're really pleased to have already supported over 1,500 participants back into work across those two areas that we're delivering. And, and, and whilst we've seen actually a slightly lower number of people come through than we'd initially expected, uh, not actually linked to um, the, the economic position, but I just think more the, you know, the, the, the natural teething issues in getting new services up and running. Um, the, the, the numbers of people we've actually been able to get into work has still been excellent. And I think that's a reflection of some of the stronger economic situation that, that we're seeing. And certainly our experience of that has been that that it's been um, perhaps not quite as difficult to support some individuals into work as we thought, but, but clearly others have, will, will have, have had some greater barriers to that. Um, interestingly, one of the challenges we've found is getting uh, is, is, is engaging people face to face. So the restart scheme is fundamentally still a face to face service. So unlike JETS, for example, which is entirely delivered remotely that Devon mentioned earlier, Restart requires uh, uh, providers to meet with a participant at least monthly in person and if not more, depending on individual need. And so um, one of the interesting barriers that we've, we've identified is that we're getting quite high failure to attend rates in some areas. And I think a lot of that still is from a hang uh, the, the hangover of anxiety to come into the office. Often the, the majority of individuals that we've been working with with job centres for the last uh, 12 to 18 months haven't been required to go in as they would do normally as part of their job seeker commitments. And so it, it's been really interesting to, to, to try and navigate around that and give people the comfort to come in and see us where it's necessary. We've seen a, a, a real varied nature of the barriers from lacking from, you know, ranging from, sorry, uh, just a lack of confidence to, to, to relatively simple things like updating a CV. And, and given some of the uneven recovery of the labour market, we've been trying to work with participants to identify transferable skills or, or developing new skills that allow them to perhaps pivot into new sectors that they've not previously worked in, but where there might not be the same level of employment opportunity that there was Previously, obviously, hospitality and retail, we all know, have been severely impacted. And so helping those individuals in those areas look at what else, what, what other opportunities there could be that could still be suitable for them is, is one of the key challenges that we faced. And we've been uh, working really closely with employers in partnership as well. And so we've uh, been identifying hundreds of vacancies through our, our employer engagement teams. And again, one of the interesting uh, observations that we've seen is 
actually employees are far more enthusiastic about coming and working with uh, Maximus and, and, and I assume the other providers as well on restart but due to the fact that it's you know the, the difficulties in hiring that we're, we're seeing uh, are far you know different than we did initially anticipated and so that that collab active collaboration and and um, uh, appetite to work with with Maximus on, on restart has been really positive uh, and finally we've we've had some really positive engagement with some local stakeholders and wider organizations we work with a number of charity partners um, in the collaboration uh, in collaboration to deliver this restart scheme as well as uh, local authorities and the boroughs in the areas that we were operating Redbridge being a, a key one of those uh, next slide please um, and, and that just briefly again uh, brings me on to the delivery in, in partnership and so uh, maximus delivery model of the restart scheme is absolutely that that we want to work in a collaborative and, and uh, joined up way as, as far as we're able to with 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 local organizations be that uh, smes third sectors local authorities provisions and and we've uh, the, the primary route through which we were aiming to do that is what we're calling our community partnership network and and that's really a collection of organizations who share a uh, a view to, to to provide positive uh, services to to the community and 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 try and join up provision as best as we possibly can to to uh, ensure the best possible support for the individuals that we're engaging with and and maximus will be or has ring fenced several million pounds to invest in in a community partnership network so that first and foremost we'd be keen to draw on provision that's that's already available and funded and uh, so that we're we're maximizing the value for the taxpayer and, and avoiding duplication but where those funding streams don't exist we've got the opportunities to invest in in support that, that meets an individual's barriers and challenges to ultimately help them move back into work as quickly as possible we're also keen to rebuild best practice and capacity so we know that you know that the, the organisations we're working with have probably operated in the areas that we're delivering services in for for many years and, and will likely be delivering services uh, beyond the the end of the restart scheme so trying to leave a legacy uh, and, and build capacity within those organisations far beyond the end of the scheme is, is a critical part of the of the appetite of working uh, collectively together. Next slide, please. So I, I just thought, given that uh, um, we're, we're going to be hearing from um, some colleagues from, from Redbridge shortly, it'd be interesting to share some reflections that we've we've been seeing so far. Um, so, uh, and so, and hopefully this <laughs> this is this is all uh, as you understand it. So, if uh, if I've got anything wrong here, I'm sure I'll be corrected shortly. But we know that the employment rate in in Redbridge, particularly at the moment, is around seven percent, which is higher than the London average at five point six, and and higher than the the national average at, at four point three. So, we know that Redbridge particularly is being challenged around the level of unemployment, and there's potentially a lot of reasons behind that. Um, which perhaps the team can talk about or I can try and share more details on. Positively though, what we've seen is uh, in October particularly around 12,000 job postings just in Redbridge in that month alone, which is about 40% more than we saw in September. So what that further illustrates is the is the degree of, of, uh, of engagement and positive growth that potentially that we're seeing and, and, and working with those employees that are recruiting to support as many people into work as possible is, is a big part of that. The challenge being often where those roles are being recruited, and as you can see, their business, finance, and legal make up the largest proportion over all of those roles, uh, of, of around 3,200 of, of those postings in October. And so, it's the the, the trick is being able to work with the participants that, that we're supporting to understand where there are opportunities for them to move into those positions, and obviously where there isn't a direct like for like experience there. What can we do to help them develop those skills to to move into those growth areas? And and we, we have, as I've mentioned, seen participants moving back into work in a real broad spectrum of, of industries, including some of those listed there, uh, as well as some really key positive employment partners around, uh, you know, like su such as Travelodge and Hilton and, and Amazon Protocol Education uh, are some of the largest, but, but certainly a, a vast proportion of people that we're helping into work are through small localised organisations who are uh, are seeking to recruit now post-pandemic and, and as things hopefully on the chron side start to look a little bit more positive. One of the interesting barriers that we're seeing particularly in Redbridge is, is around ESOL needs so individuals who perhaps uh, English isn't their first language and so trying to uh, work with them to, to strengthen their ability to to communicate but also work with employers for whom uh, often uh, English isn't a primary requirement and and trying to identify where there are partners who who for whom those individuals have got a, a better chance of thriving and securing employment is one of the key areas of development that we've identified and and the, the, for those returning to work 
quickly it's it's certainly what we've identified is certainly has been a result of of the uh, the pandemic and then sort of potentially being uh, displaced from their roles as a result of that and so um, whilst you know these individuals as i say have been out of work for between 12 and 18 months often those uh, relatively light touch focus interventions to just really fundamentally get underneath the, the barriers that they feel have been preventing them to get into work up to this point has been the thing we found has had the greatest impact in moving them back into work quickly and has contributed to that that the 1500 people that we've helped so far which is fabulous uh, so rather than me talking now what i'm hoping that you'll uh, be able to see now is a is a, is a short video which is a uh, will do a much better job of illustrating some of the support that we've been able to offer than than i can just by describing it so if i pass over to the, uh, uh, yeah. the team if you give that to everyone yeah. uh, so I mean, that's just one example and hopefully a, a, a really uh, you find like me it's a really powerful message of, of the impact that that this scheme and, and other schemes like it have on on helping people transform their lives and, and and so one of the things that we're really keen to to do is continue to to enhance and improve the services that we're that we're delivering and there were three things that I'd, I'd be keen to just leave you with in terms of the thoughts for the, the future of the scheme so the first is really uh, the evidence of uh, or building the evidence of, of what works to allow us to continuously improve the services we're offering but but ultimately uh, as i said before leave a legacy of for future programs so that the next round of provision that comes along either procured locally or through central government has some really positive and, and data-led learnings of, of what's working and, and how those can enhance future provision we're really keen to, to look to work even more closely with our delivery partners um, and, and local organisations to, to, to explore new and, and, and different perhaps ways of, of joining up services and provision and, and obviously working together with any new services that, that may come on board over the time that we're delivering the, the restart scheme. And finally, uh, exploring the use of, of technology. Clearly technology is uh, over the last 18 months has been truly transformation and our ability to continue to collaborate and work together this being a, a perfect example of that and i think how finding ways to uh, use technology to enhance the services that we're able to provide while still ensuring that no one is excluded or uh, who is unable to engage in support i think is a, is a critical area of focus for for me and the team over the next few years so um we'll keep to obviously work with with all the sort of local organizations as well who might also be exploring those areas to see how we can join up on that uh, so that was everything sorry if i've run over slightly uh but um uh, i'm more than happy to take any questions at the point where we get to that thank you very much